Okay, folks, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the next part of the uh, build series on the Tamiya T55. Um, we're there. Uh, so I thought I'd show you at the start of the video and then we'll go into how we've achieved all this stowage around the back of the turret here. And we've obviously got the, the stereo on the front, the radio antennas there. And then we've got all these chairs and bags and all that barrel and chain and all that stuff um, on the rear of the vehicle. So the idea being that obviously we're going to um, kind of base this vehicle on a vehicle on sort of urban operations in Mogadishu. Um, so it's not going to have loads and loads of kits strapped to it and all that stuff because they're going to be operating from a, a forward operating base pretty much in the sense of Mogadishu. So they don't need to be carrying all their kit um, on this vehicle. Um, so that's the idea in my head, really. So we've got a bit of stowage, but not loads, um, because obviously the majority of their stuff's going to be at their their base uh, in Mogadishu. They're not moving into theatre or into an area of operations. The idea is this vehicle is operating in the city and has been for some time. Um, so the weathering is looking spot on to, to my eye. Um, and the storage really sets it off and, and more of these sort of brighter colours run that traditional military storage that we would normally do on a tank. Um, so I think it looks kind of how I had it in my mind's eye really uh, when I first saw the reference pictures of this particular scheme. Um, so yeah, we're there or thereabouts. So we're going to go on now to the video um, where I'm going to run through how I, how I did all this, how I painted it, how I scratch built the tart rolls, etc, etc. Um, so I'm going to shut up. We're going to go and have a look at how all this was done. Um, so yeah, I'll see you in a minute and uh, show you how I did all this. Okay, folks, so let's have a look at how we're going to do the tow cable. Or how we've already done it but how how i did it so essentially it's telling us we need two tow cables one here running around to the front and then one to the back we're not going to put the back one on we're just having one on the front um to show sort of use missing parts that sort of stuff but what it's telling us is uh, we need one at 100 mil uh, which is obviously 10 centimeters 107 mil using the supplied sort of nylon string now this stuff is it's okay but it's a nightmare to glue and also what you will get as soon as you cut it it starts to fray however there's a way around that which i'm going to show you now so then we attach obviously the the hooks on each end so let's move that out of the way and as if by magic one i prepared earlier so this is a hundred mil length of tow cable and the two hooks um, that are going to go on each end. Obviously, we're going to glue it in place. So the way we're going to do this is we need to strengthen this and we need to make it so it doesn't fray and it doesn't, um, so it's easier to glue, essentially. So the way we're going to do it is it's just an old milk bottle top, um, a pipette, and a citadel colour called Stall Vermin Fur, which is like this browny gray color so we give that a bit of a shake and then all we're going to do is get our pipette and it's very very thick this stuff so bear that in mind get the pipette and as best we can because it's incredibly thick paint and we don't need a lot so we're going to pop that into the milk bottle top or any sort of plastic uh, dish or some of the metal dishes that you can get then what we're going to do is just a cheap pair of tweezers tweezers you don't mind getting paint on and we're going to pop this into the milk bottle top and we're just going to cover the entire piece of nylon with the paint like so and you can use it you can use any color you want um i find this color is a nice color because it's not silver um but it also once it's weathered 
it has some sort of metallic steel type color to it um, so it works it works quite well I think rather than that kind of clean shiny silver metallic -y color so make sure the entire thing is covered in the storm vermin fur and then get a piece of kitchen roll or tissue paper or whatever on your bench and then take that out because once this dries you don't want it stuck in that milk bottle top and because it'll be a nightmare then just get another piece of the kitchen paper and just dab off the excess paint from the tow cable and it's as simple as that so what we're going to do now is we're going to let that dry completely and then once it's dry it will be firmer it will be more malleable I've lost the hook there it'll be more malleable um, and it gives us a good basis we can then glue it into the hooks etc and the kind of look we're going for is as you can see on the hole there that's what we're going for and I'll show you how how to do that um, so that's the the tow cable um, that we will put that to once so I let it dry while we work on some of the other other bits of stowage and show you how we did those okay so I'll be back once this is dry okay so tow cable is now all dry we've got a little bit of white still showing through where it's been resting but that's not a problem um so it's all dry now so what we need to do now as you can see it's quite malleable um which it certainly wasn't before and the paint helps with that um so what we need to do now is we need to glue that into our sort of tow hooks um and the way we're going to do that is just use a little bit of ca glue but we're going to use the gel type um so i'm going to be using this loctite super glue it comes in the applicator bottle um and it's kind of the gel type of of ca glue rather than that very thin runny ca glue so we're just going to put a drop of the gel so you just squeeze the sides of the bottle here this one's coming to an end so we have to put quite a bit of pressure on it and you can see there we've got that ca glue in there and then we just place our tow cable so if you put that on a flat surface cutting mats ideal and then use a, a toothpick or a cocktail stick depending again where you are in the world and just push that into place like so and that is so much easier than trying to glue it when it, it's the the unpainted nylon it, it's an absolute nightmare with fraying and all that stuff remove any of the excess glue and then just let it dry basically and as you can see that's that's in place now we've got a little bit of glue squeezing out there it's not a problem just remove that try and keep your fingers away from the actual ca glue until it's cured and there we go it's as easy as that um dead dead simple um and it makes life so much easier um so then essentially you can then paint that anywhere you want so if you want to do it a high metallic color or you want to put a wash on it and then dry brush some metallic you can paint the tow hooks whatever color you want like a dark steel it doesn't really matter but that's essentially how we've done it um and then added it to the hole of the tank stuck to there added it to the hull of the tank and i think it looks it looks okay we went with i think that was lead belcher from citadel with a normal oil wash and um, just to darken it down um, and give that kind of steel look rather than this bright metallic silver um, and i think it's it's worked um so yeah that's how i do it basically with the the nylon um so have a go at it and see what you think let me know in the comments if it works for you um so yeah that's tow cables. Okay, folks. So let's talk about the boxes, uh, whether they be boxes of water, soft drinks, rations, etc. So these particular ones here uh, are from a trumpeter, 35th scale striker. Um, so in that kit, you get uh, basically a paper sheet um, with boxes of sort of bottled water 
um, with various sort of Arabic um, signage and logos and that sort of stuff on, as well as English. Um, you get Coca-Cola and you get Pepsi. Um, you also get these kind of more modern uh, ration boxes or food boxes. Um, so a lot of these are either issued to the military or they're given out to sort of local civilians that, that don't have much food and that sort of stuff is part of the hearts and minds. Obviously, these are from the Red Crescent, which is the, the Red Cross in, in the sort of Middle East and, and Arabic type countries. Um, so you get all that in the kit, in the Trumpeter Strike kit. So what I did is I scanned that sheet in, kept it, um, which means that I can print these off to my heart's content and construct the boxes. So here's a couple of the boxes here that are constructed. And we've placed a couple of those on the rear of the tank there. A bottle of bottled water that we've crushed a little bit um, and a, a box of Pepsi. So really simple. You cut the, the box out um, from the, the sheet. And then essentially all you do is take a very sharp knife um, or blade and you essentially score so you cut along here because you're going to fold it up as you would with any box take away any excess like so and then score along all the lines that you're going to fold along just to make folding a bit easier and then essentially just fold it up and glue the tabs um, with PVA glue and it's as simple as that. And you can see by scoring along the lines, you make it very, very easy. So you just you just basically construct a box. That's all you do. Um, and that will give you the end result of these sort of boxes in 35th scale. Um, if you're clever enough, you can scale this down um, to 48, 70 second, whatever you wanted to do. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's plenty of sort of these online and stuff. Um, as I say, I got them in the trumpeter kit um, and just scanned them in and I, I've got them forever now so I can use them and have used them on, on numerous builds. So we've got two more boxes to add to the, the T55 um, and then there may be some on the dire base or whatever I'll see, see how that goes. But yeah, they're very, very easy, very easy to do and very effective, I think. And um, they kind of give it a bit of context, as you can see on the rear there. And you can push them into place and, and crush the box a little bit. There's no issue with that at all. Um, so, yeah, that's worked really, really well. Um, so, yeah, happy with that. And uh, we shall move on to rope and how we're going to paint the rope, uh, which is this you can see around here. OK. OK, so we have attached... Obviously, the garden chairs from Mini Art, they come in one piece. Uh, we've attached one of the fuel barrels and we've kind of dented that and that sort of stuff. We're going to run some chain over that. Um, but what we have done, obviously, you can't just really leave the, the chairs hanging off the back of a tank. As soon as that tank moves, they'll fall off. So we needed to tie them down in some way. So what we've used is some of the nylon thread uh, cord, whatever you want to call it, that comes in the kit. Um, and we've cut that, uh, I think it was about... 12 centimeters or 120 mil and then we've draped it around the chairs at the back and we've tied it uh, to these tie down points on the rear of the vehicle however it currently looks very new very fresh um it doesn't look like it, it's meant to be there it looks like a bit of nylon cord that you've put on so we need to paint it and weather it so it kind of blends into to the rest of the vehicle um, and stowage. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use, first of all, a Citadel colour, which is called Skeleton Horde. Now it's a contrast colour, so it's very translucent. It's very, very thin. Um, so we're just going to kind of dab this in place. Um, and what that's going to do really is, although it will give us a colour tone, that's not the tone we're going to end up with. What it's going to do is give some structure um, and some coverage to the nylon cord that will then allow us to much easier to, to apply paint to it. 
Um, so that's why we're doing this. Um, you could use thin down PVA, um, etc. But by using this, the contrast paint, what it actually does is it enables this sort of texture of the the nylon cord to show through. Unfortunately, if you use PVA, you risk um, you put a coat on it. Obviously, and risk making it quite smooth. So we're going to go around the whole whole of the the piece of cord really with this skeleton hoard um, and make sure that we're kind of in the ballpark and we've got this structure and this will dry really quick this will dry in about 20 minutes or so um, so we want to make sure that we're covering all of it if we get a little bit on the hull it doesn't really matter because it's so translucent um that it will it won't be noticeable really and it just adds to a little bit of weathering a bit of mud or whatever so that's how we're going to do it like so and as i say the idea of this is not to color the nylon really we're not painting it as such we're just adding the first tone the first shade and to give us a better surface that paint will adhere to um, when we come to do it um, so yeah i'll get this finished uh, we'll let it dry and then we'll come back and start adding the the color that we want um, which is going to be a, essentially a rope color a very light gray dirty rope color um, which from the reference pictures is what I can see really. Um, so yeah, I'll get this done, make sure I've covered all of it. And then we will come back and uh, get some, some actual paint on it. And that's the plan. So yeah, I'll get that done and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we need to finish off the rope here on the on the back holding the chairs on. So the effect we're going for is exactly the same as, as on these tart rolls on the turret. Um, so we're going for this sort of dirty white colour. Um, and that's fairly easy to achieve, to be honest. So the skeleton horde contrast is now dry. And as you can see, We've got this couple of bits of white showing through, but that's not a problem. It's a very translucent um, paint anyway, because it's one they contrast range. Um, but it's enough now that we can start applying uh, the, the actual paint. So the color we're going to use is Ultium Gray from Citadel, which is a very, very almost white, light gray color. Um, so with this we need to be very very careful uh, a bit more careful than we have been with the the skeleton hood because we don't want to get any sort of white or gray on the chairs themselves or the hall or anything like that because it will be really visible so as you can see we're just gently applying this paint over the rope and what this will do, it will give us a base colour then um, to apply a wash, which will then give us this muddy or dirty white rope effect. So I'm going to go around, get all this done. And then essentially all we're going to do then is on top of that, once that's dry, is just apply a good liberal coat of Norn Oil. And that will give us that dirty white rope look that we're after and it's as easy as that there's no dark art to this or smoke and mirrors or anything like that um so yeah i'll get that done and then that's the the rope done on the back and then we'll add a couple of those pepsi boxes and mineral water boxes um, and that's done for for that bit of the storage then um yeah so i'll be back okay folks 
so we're moving on to some tart rolls and that sort of stuff which are going to be mainly focused around the turret um because essentially as i said at the start of the video we don't want to overload this with stowage because this vehicle is depicted or we want to depict it as operating in mogadishu so it's going to be operating from some sort of forward operating base it's not going into theater or into an area of operations for the first time it's not going to have the crew's entire um kit on it so we, we'll be quite minimal with, with the stowage that we put on but we want to show this kind of colorful stowage that we saw in the reference pictures so around this hook here and these hooks here we're going to put another tart roll uh, running sort of horizontally between these two and obviously we need to put it in a different color really um, so i think we'll go for a yellow or a lighter green we'll see um, but these are all scratch built so how did i do it it's really really simple so get a little bit of white tack or blue tack and mold it roughly into the shape you want the benefit is that it's pliable um, so you can kind of mess around on the hull get it into roughly this you know the shape that you want it um to be get a, a toothpick or cocktail stick depending on where you are in the world and then just remove it off there and that's roughly the kind of shape we're going for I and mean, you can see on the back we've got the imprint of the um the hooks etc so it remains pliable which is also a benefit so then just put a cocktail stick or toothpick in what will be the back um, and then we'll move on to to making it look like a tarp so the product we're going to be using is from vms called paper shaper and we'll also be using some of their uh, modeling paper so this is kind of a very thin um, paper you buy it in packs comes in sheets it's very very thin as you can see it's almost see-through um, it's not as thin as like tracing paper or tissue paper it's got a bit more structure to it than that but it is uh, very very thin and then what we want to do is take a, a modeling knife or a pair of scissors and we want to cut roughly a square twice the width of the blue tack that we've got here then what you need is some sort of receptacle it's just an old lid off a rattle can give the paper shaper a really good shake and then just decant some of that as you can see it's very very thin into the receptacle like so then get some tweezers and what we're going to do is immerse the paper into it like so and what you want to do is make sure that the liquid has covered the entire entire paper um, which will help you later on like so just be careful not to pierce it as i've done there but it, it won't matter on on this particular piece um like so the benefit of using this is it can be done with sort of thin down um pva glue and that sort of stuff i used to do that um, but this takes paint really really well um so prime it and then paint it in in your color of choice so once you've got it fully immersed remove the paper from whatever your uh, receptacle of choice is and this will stay wet and pliable for for quite some time got a bit of a leak in the middle there not to worry and then place that in sort of a diamond configuration over your, your blue tack like so and then just kind of scrunch it up it, there's no sort of system to it unless you're being really accurate you know you're doing sort of more modern um us army type tart rolls and that sort of stuff then obviously use your reference pictures and be a bit more precise but this is just basically a kit wrapped in polythene sheets and tarpaulin and all that sort of stuff from what i can see on the reference pictures so you kind of wrap it around like so roughly in the shape that you you want it to be what you can do is just get a cheap brush yeah, find a cheap brush there we go it's an old citadel brush 
he says. And then what you can do is just get a bit of that liquid onto there and just kind of push it into place then and it will hold. It will hold its shape. And this takes, I was given about 12 hours to, to fully dry. Um, and you've got your cocktail stick there, so you can just put it in a bit of polystyrene or whatever, and it will hold it in shape. And when you come back, it will be completely rigid um, and completely uh, paintable and, and all that stuff. What will happen is because we're using it on the blue tack or white tack, rather than sort of milliput or green stuff or anything like that, that will never dry completely solid. So when you come to place it onto the vehicle, it will still allow you a little bit of movement. So you can, particularly when on the turret here, where we're going around like a curved surface, it will allow us to, to mould it to that, to so give it a more natural natural look as it conforms to the the shape of the turret and that is as simple as that so what we need to do now is we need to let that dry completely um and then what we we will do is we'll come back we'll paint it in whatever color we choose um and then we we'll use a bit of ca glue to stick it onto um onto the hull itself um and then retrospective if you like later on we'll add some rope um, in an appropriate place um, and then weather it up the same as same as the other two so that's that's how we do it it's really really simple vms paper shaper wonderful stuff um, so we'll let that completely dry now um, and then we'll come back and you will see once it's dry how easy it takes paint and primer and all that stuff um, and then we can get it onto the turret and uh, that will be the last sort of roll tart roll that we do on the turret um, as I say it's an urban operating vehicle so it won't be too far from some sort of operating base uh, where we can um, store the kit so it doesn't all need to be carried on the vehicle if we were in a more rural type location um, so yeah I'll let that dry and I'll come back Okay, so the tart roll that we've scratch built is now dry. So it's fairly solid now, but there is still a little bit of movement in it, which will help when we mold it to the uh, to the, the curve of the turret. So if we look at the turret so far, we've got an orange tarp roll and a green tarp roll, dark green. So I'm going to, I think, go with a light green on this. Um, and it will be weathered in exactly the same way um, as the others. So the colour I'm going to use is a Citadel colour called Moot Green, which is kind of this very bright lime green almost. Um, so we'll just get the base colour on, um, let that dry. And then what we will do is we will essentially come back... Um, uh, and just weather it in the same way uh, so they all look kind of they've been in the, the same environment so just with the mute, mute green we don't need to prime it or anything um, for this particular stage um, and we're just going to put a, a complete coverage and you can see how well now this takes paint um, it doesn't kind of soak in uh, when I've used tissue paper and PVA glue, thin down or, or whatever, it, it tends to absorb the paint a little bit, um, making coverage problematic sometimes. Um, but this stuff doesn't seem to, to behave in that way and it, it makes painting a, a doddle, really. So we'll get this green all over, including the, the rear of the tart roll, which will be against the turret. We won't necessarily see it. Um, but if there are any gaps, then it just means that, you know, we're not just seeing white, white paper. But I think uh, for what we're trying to achieve, and as I say, it's, it was always going to be a challenge with this build, the stowage, um, because it's not that traditional military stowage where we could go out and get some resin uh, bits and what, and what have you. Um, 
it, it was always going to be a challenge to create this kind of just kit wrapped up in tarpaulin really in various bright colors uh, but as you can see that's it it's as simple as that so we're going to let that dry that will be drying about 20 minutes or so um, and then we're going to come back in and we're going to sort of move around these creases in the in the the paper or material as it should look um, and then we're going to highlight the edges and all that sort of stuff so it's done in exactly the same way as the other two and we'll just make sure obviously there's no we don't want any of the white paper showing anywhere on this um, and I think we're, we're pretty much there but once it's dry we'll have a, a better idea um, so that's it for this uh, I'll come back once this is dry and put the, the shade and the highlights on it so I'll see you in a minute so the green colour is now dried um, and we've got good coverage all over the uh, the roll, the tarp roll, whatever. But what we can see is we've got lots of creases and all that sort of stuff in it. And we want to accentuate those. We want to make those more visible. So the way we're going to do this is essentially do a wash of another Citadel colour called Seraphin Sepia, which is like this sepia colour, funnily enough. <laughs> so we give that a shake. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply this all over the tarp roll. As you can see, straight away, it will settle into the creases of the uh, of the paper that we've obviously put on there. And it just gives it, straight away, without doing any highlights, it just gives it a much more interesting look. Um, a much more interesting uh texture and everything else and that's exactly what we're going for so you have to be quite careful you don't want to knock it off your your cocktail stick so be gently gentle with it you don't need loads um it will cover really really well the coverage is excellent uh, as with all their sort of shades um, and again it will take it's acrylic based so it will take no more than sort of 20 minutes to dry. And then what we'll do, we'll go in and we'll just do a very simple highlight um, and dust effect, the same as the others. So that's it, there we go. We'll let that dry um, and then we'll, we'll apply some dust and some highlights to it. And then we'll get it onto, uh, onto the turret and get it in place. So uh, I'll be back in a second. Okay, so as you can see that Seraphim Sepia wash has dried now and it's dried in all kind of the creases and, and recesses of the, the paper and now what is our tarp roll essentially. So all that remains really before we attach this to the vehicle is for us to highlight some of the edges um and create some dust effects and that sort of stuff so we're going to old faithful shabti bone by citadel uh, a bit of kitchen roll and a flathead brush quite a small one as you can see cheap brush and we're literally as we've done over most of the vehicle um we're going to use dry brushing to to pick out the edges so taking most of the paint off the brush this will take seconds really and then we just start to gently brush it over and hopefully as you can see it's picking up the creases the edges and creating not only a, a highlight of the edges but also kind of a dusty um, effect on the uh, on the material and that's exactly what we want dead dead easy to do I mean you could go round if you wanted um and pick out all the edge highlights for the base color you could build up you know light in each layer and all that you could do that absolutely um but for the purposes of this and what we're using it for it's a lot of time for for not much effect really uh, so this way i think it looks as good as we need it to look Make sure we got our lid on the paint before we do this. So if we get the turret now, um, and what we want, so on the rear of the turret, we've got 
that hook there. Let's put it like that. So we've got this hook here, and we've got this this one here. Um, so what we want to do is we want the the roll the other way around. So that bit of material that's kind of hanging down, we want that over those two hooks really in that sort of position. Now the benefit, as I said, of using the blue tack to do this, if I put a little bit of pressure on that with my finger and thumb, we can contour that now to the, the shape of the turret and get it in exactly the right sort of position that we want it, um, which is there ideal now what can happen just there is you start to push it into place you will get a bit of white showing through that's not a problem we just touch that up um it's, it's really not an issue so we're kind of happy with that as it is and what we're going to do now is just glue that into place so we can take it back off try not to move the um the shape of it at all and then we're just going to add a dab of CA glue gel there and there. And then we'll place that back on and you will have the imprint of the hook like so. And there we go. And we'll just let that dry. And then what we will do is we'll just come back in once that's dry and just touch up that bit there where we've got the white coming through. Um, and then we'll add the rope in exactly the same way as we've done on the rear of the vehicle. No different. Um, uh, and that will look like the other tart rolls then tied onto the turret. Simple as that. What we need to do as well is we'll get one of these Pepsi boxes that we made. And we'll just rest that on there, on the, on the turret there. So again, little dab of CA glue on the other side of it. And then that will sit, oh, he says, all fingers and thumbs today. That will sit on top of the top roll there. We can crush it a little bit because it would be, it wouldn't be perfectly square um, on the back of a T55 to it. It's going to get bashed about a bit, like so. And then if you need to, you can come in with your, your cocktail stick and just readjust it and get it into the kind of position you want, which is obviously down to yourself. And then if you've got any excess glue squeezing out, just remove that with the tip of your toothpick. Job done. And that I think will do for the rear of the turret. We'll just add the rope onto here, touch up that little bit of white, and, uh, and we're there for the rear of our turret. Simple as that. Okay, so time to do some chain. So the chain I'm going to be using is from Fields of Glory Models. It's three by two mil and you get almost a meter in length. So this sort of stuff will last you ages um, unless you're doing like massive chain link fences or, or stuff like that. But it will last you a long, long time. Um, it comes in kind of this brass color here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of white tack, blue tack, doesn't matter. Like so, just on a bit of old cardboard, just an old piece of polystyrene. And we're gonna place a mixing cup or medicine cup on there. So it's nice and stable. Then what we're gonna do is we are gonna use some Ultimate Modeling Products burnishing liquid, burnishing fluid, however you wanna say it. And we're going to decant some of this. We'll use a pipette just for cleanliness sake. So we'll just give it a bit of a stir. And we're going to decant some of this into our medicine cup. We need a fair bit because we want to submerge the chain in the cup. So we're probably going to use four pipettes worth, which are going to be about eight mil, between eight and 10 mil, really. And then all we're going to do is get our chain. It's, I've cut a length off, uh, whether we actually use all that or not, um, and just put it in the burnishing fluid. And straight away, you can see 
straight away it's starting to kind of change its 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 color um, and it will come out as this sort of black worn uh, chain so we give that about i don't know half an hour 45 minutes and then we'll take it out onto a piece of kitchen paper and just dry it off um, and that's pretty much it the chain's done and then that will be added to, to the vehicle um, and the idea is where we're going to add it let's move that out of the way where we're going to add it is sort of here in a bit of a pile draped over the barrel and potentially draped over this rear rear bit here um, but we'll see how that how that goes um, so yeah that's it really it's as easy as that using the the ultimate modeling products burnishing fluid and that will give us the effect we want on the chain without having to resort to any sort of paint or anything like that so that's that and we'll drape that across the back um yeah and, and as you can see we're getting there now with the stowage so uh yeah i'll be back in a sec so folks as we can see on the side of the turret we've got these ammunition uh boxes uh which are for the dushka um so they're all painted and on i'm going to show you how i did that it's really really simple um because we've got this one which needs to um go into the dushka itself um so other than the strap which was just done in german gray the the green and everything is going to be exactly the same technique um so the way we painted this really really simple is we used vallejo color or model color olive green um so you just decant that into a palette give it a bit of a shake these are really really good um brush paints um, they works really really well thin them sort of 50 50 with water um and, you, and you're good to go straight from the bottle really you don't need to add any additives to them or anything they're very quite hard wearing as brush paints i've never got on with them in an airbrush um but as brush paints they're they're great so we just start to put on a coat of the olive green dead simple uh, the good thing about vallejos with brush painting is if you use a couple of couple of thin coats is you, you don't get brush marks um which which is great because uh, that's obviously what you want to try and avoid which is the the brush painters nightmare but they are they are very good paints for for brush painting as i say i've never i know people do and uh, they do the model air they do game air they do game color lots of different ranges with lots of different colors um, but I've never got on with them through an airbrush, whether that be the model air, game air, just never, uh, never got on with them. But for brush painting, they're one of my go-tos for sure. So there we go. So we get the green on. Obviously, we're trying to avoid the, the feeding mechanism. Um, but if we need to touch that up afterwards, we can. And uh, that's going to be sort of a dark grey, black color uh, we just want to get this base green onto the actual ammunition box as such um, it's got a little star on it obviously being soviet in manufacturing in the middle um, as you can see there but we don't really we're not going to worry about that too much um, so yeah and that's it so we get that base color on and then what we're going to do is we're going to shade and highlight this in exactly the same way as we did with the tarpaulin is we're going to use a seraphine sepia shade and then we're going to dry brush over and actually accent all the edges and the detail with a shabti bone so i'll let that dry about half an hour um and then we're we're good to go so that's your base color over ump black primer very very nice green um and once the shade and highlights done you'll see it in all its glory really if you'll focus 
Um, but yeah, looks a bit rough and ready at the minute, but trust the process, definitely. So I'll be back and uh, and we'll get get the shade and highlight on that. See you in a minute. So I've put the, the serif and sepia on exactly as we did with the tart rolls, etc. You can see it's dulled down that color quite a lot and it's left some sort of residual dirt and grime uh, on the uh, on the detail on the on the ammo box there um, so all that remains now again old faithful a shab to bone and we're just gonna dry brush around the edges and the details just to bring it back bit of a dust effect and also a bit of a edge highlight all kind of at the same time it's exactly how we did the other the other ammo boxes um, so we've got no no difference at all in the way we've done those so as you can see straight away it starts to bring out that detail all around the edges um, like so and gives it this dusty um, appearance which is exactly what we're after make sure you do both sides well, flicked it away. So yeah, make sure you do both sides, uh, front and rear, essentially. And there we go. It's as simple as that. It really is so simple. And yet, I think, very effective. So you will notice on this bit here, there's no paint, and that's gonna be the bit that goes into the dushka itself. Um, and we don't want to be putting extra thin over paint really um, can affect the uh, the bond that we get so we grab our turret and this will fit all be well into the side of the dushka there so what we will do is get a bit of extra thin and we'll place that inside the the hole there like so and then we just need some tweezers. And then we place that exactly where it needs to be. Like so. He says, best laid plans and all that, guys. Best laid plans is a bit fiddly, trying to do it on camera, but it will go push it home gently because you don't want to knock the dushka off its mount and it is as simple as that and that will set in place and there we go we've got the ammo crate onto the dushka itself if there is a bit of paint or whatever that's missing you can always go in and touch that up and our dushka should move on its on its bracket um, without any any real issues um, but yeah simple as that job done so yeah that's the uh, the ammo crate done um, so we'll we'll get all this together now and then we'll have a look at the finished tank um, with all the stowage in place that we've covered during this video um, and hopefully that will give you some ideas of how you can do something similar or you know the same if you're doing african union type armor um but yeah we're, we're pretty much there now uh we have put an antenna on uh, we just need to touch up the basement so that's dry and that is essentially stretch brew that's all it is there's lots and lots of videos on youtube showing people how to stretch brew it's an old school technique but for making antennas um it works fine I'll get all this together and then i'll come back and we'll see all the storage in place how it looks if we need to add anything else or are we happy with with where we're at so um yeah i'll be back in minutes for you okay guys so that's it it's all done as far as storage is concerned um so we've added all this stuff tart rolls rope antenna the dushka's on there now we've got all this storage here at the back with the garden chairs and the chain um the the external fuel drum that we've painted in sort of more of a civilian type 
scheme tow cable is on and yeah i think it's looking pretty good to be honest it's kind of what i had in my mind's eye uh, we're not going to bother putting the side skirts on i want to keep the tracks kind of exposed so we can see those um so that's it that is the vehicle pretty much done um there may be a few odds and sods of weathering um, once it's on a base just to tie it in but we'll see how it looks um, but pretty much the vehicle is done um, so now the next video uh, it may take a couple of videos we're going to move on to the base itself and what we're trying to do is just place this vehicle in Mogadishu in an urban environment um, and I'll show you how I plan plan on doing that um, but yeah that's it it's it's really really simple um, hopefully you pick something up from the video um whether that be technique or ideas or whatever um if you have let me know in the comments um don't forget to go and visit umpretail.com go and visit emodels.co.uk um, all the other videos up to this stage are now out they're on the channel so go and have a look at those how we painted it how we weathered it how we damaged various bits and all that sort of stuff to give you an idea um, of how we've got it to this stage if this is the first video in the series that you've seen um, and if you go right back to the beginning to the kind of introduction um, it will show some reference pictures of this sort of stowage and everything else but for now the tank itself is done um, so now it's a case of as I say putting it onto a base and then maybe some final bits of weathering to tie it into that base but we'll sit we'll know more once it's on the base um, but for now we're done um, so yeah thank you very much for watching don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and uh, I'll see you in the next part where we're going to be working on a Mogadishu street scene base for this so uh, yeah thanks very much till next time stay safe happy holiday bye bye